thank you so much. It's great to be here. I've uh, been to this event a couple times the last few years, and it's all, always great to see all of you and have the opportunity to have some conversations about where technology is going. So before we get started, let me do a little survey. How many of you recognize this device? Did anyone have one of these ever? Okay. So this, of course, the flip phone, which in its day was awesome. But we came across this uh, flip phone in a drawer the other day, and chatting with my daughter, she's like, so do you take pictures with it? No. Does it have apps? No. So it's just a phone? Yeah, it's just a phone. And this was not that long ago, right? We all remember it. And yet technology is changing at such a fast pace. So now we have this. Everyone has their iPhone or their Samsung Galaxy. And it's really not a phone, right? It's a computer. It's a computer you hold in your hand. But it's a very sophisticated computer. It has GPS. It has motion sensing. It has touch sensing. And the thing about it is it's very simple to use. And the trick is, making very simple products is very complicated, right? It takes a lot of effort to engineer things like that, and that puts a lot more burden on the folks like you here in the audience. So how do you go about addressing this growing product complexity? Well, there's three pieces to this, and I'll talk about all three. But the most important piece of this is you. So I talked about this a couple years ago, and I strongly believe it, that the people in this audience and those in the extended webcast are unique in that you're creators. And that takes a unique kind of person. You have sort of a left brain, right brain thing going with creativity and yet practicality. And it's a unique combination. So you're the folks that make the world move forward. But we can't ask you to go it alone, right? We need to give you the tools to do that. And so I'm going to talk about kind of two sides of that. The first is, next gen uh, the first is right size digitalization. And I also want to talk about next generation design. So first of all, I think Siemens is uniquely qualified to talk about this. We do some of the most complicated, complex engineering in the world, whether that's trains or windmills, automation, drives, the list goes on and on with the list of world-class engineering products that we produce. But we not only produce world-class physical products, we also produce world-class software. And we do this because we believe that to solve these complex problems, we need to provide the tools to do so and that's up to us to do as well. And we do this through something called the Siemens Digital Innovation Platform. And so really, whether your, pro your problems are on the design side or all the way through manufacturing, we have you covered. If you're this type of person, some companies are, are doing design, CAE, predictive analysis, and maybe you do some cam on the shop floor and that kind of thing, we have you covered for that. Or perhaps you're more of an electronics and software kind of person or company. We have you uh, covered for that as well. So this is an area I'll talk quite a bit more about. And then finally, you may be more focused on the factory floor, automation, doing uh, factory simulations, maybe gathering data from your machines to figure out when they're going to uh, need service. And in fact, maybe you've even graduated all the way to what's called big data, right, where you're looking at all that data coming in and making adjustments. We have solutions for that as well. And this is all centrally tied together in the Siemens digital innovation platform. And so it works in a seamless way where you can collaborate across these various disciplines. So our customers are doing amazing things with the Siemens digital innovation platform. Take, for example, the customer Rital. This is a German customer. And they've typically made cooling equipment. But they've actually now, with our tools, been able to define a whole new uh, generation of cooling, cooling as a service. So using the MindSphere platform and cloud technology and Mind apps, they're able to deliver to their customer something different. Instead of the customer buying a product and calling in when it needs service, it's full time up. They take full responsibility for it. They're gathering that big data and analyzing it. They know when it needs service. So a whole new revenue stream for them and much better customer experience. What about Siemens Energy in Sweden, doing great things with next generation design tools? 50% fewer parts, 50% uh, fewer welds, and much smaller products as well. And so really able to change the game with this platform. But what about you in the audience? Not everybody is already at the end of their digital journey and a fully, digital, fully implemented the Siemens uh, digital innovation platform. So how do you get started on all this? What if you're at the start of your journey or perhaps you're midway through your journey? And that's what I want to talk about. So I call that right-sized digitalization. 
Well, I want to tell you that you can start small and you can get big, right? So we know the company Dyson right here in the UK. And of course, Dyson is using the full suite of the Siemens digital innovation platform. But where did Dyson start? Dyson started with Solid Edge back in 1998 and said, we need to have a more modern approach to things. And then they've grown in the suite since then. So you can start smaller and get bigger. And so I suggest a good place to start is with Solid Edge portfolio. We have a full portfolio from design, simulation, manufacturing, and more. And I'm going to take you on a little bit of a whirlwind tour through some of that product line. So let's start in design. If you're doing design from scratch, we have tools for that, of course. If you're doing design where you need to make changes to existing products, even complicated changes are easy to make thanks to synchronous technology making changes in the context of the assembly very easily. Flexible parts, adjustable parts, part drawings, assembly drawings, it's all there. If you go to simulation, of course, stress analysis, the heart of simulation. But what about beams, buckling, heat transfer, transient heat transfer, it's all there. Or fluid flow analysis. In the area of manufacturing, a lot of energy at this conference around additive, of course. Full additive suite, being able to preview the part, put it on the platen, and, and actually then send it out for a service to get your part back in the mail. And then, of course, subtractive manufacturing. Over 40 years of technology here in the subtractive manufacturing suite. This all has to be held together with data management or design management. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about technical illustrations. So that's one of those things that uh, people are just getting into as far as HTML5 and web-based publications. Pull that all together with a data management thread that allows you to keep your release data separate from your engineering data, and tools like the Team Center Suite to allow you to control that very effectively. And finally, something new, the Solid Edge Portal. I invite you guys to look at this. It's an amazing online collaboration portal, very high-speed graphics, capability to cut sections through the part, explode the parts out, very high performance, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So as I say, quite the whirlwind tour, and that's because these are all things that you can have today. And I want you to understand that we're able to meet all those needs, but at the same time, I know you come to this conference to talk about what's new, what's different, what's coming that's gonna assist me in the future, so let's spend a minute there. As I said, I know the folks in this audience are great at creating products, but we want to take that to a different level. We also want to help you manage those products. So managing the requirements and ensuring that you're actually meeting the requirements in a closed loop kind of way, and evaluating costs as part of that process. So one of the things we're working on is a true requirements management system for our customers, right? Instead of keeping things in a document or an Excel, you're going to have closed loop requirements management, where you're actually keeping track of the initial requirements and then assigning out those requirements and saying, I need to ensure this particular requirement's met and then have a closed loop to ensure that it's met. So here's our requirement. In this case, it's a simple requirement. We just need the part to be blue. Obviously very easy to achieve, but what I'm also gonna do is mark it as complete. I'm gonna mark it both graphically and I'm gonna mark it and say, I've completed this requirement and therefore closed loop. The closed loop actually creates a PDF file automatically that's a snapshot in time and documents that that requirement was met. And so not only are you creating great products, but you're ensuring in the end they completely meet customer requirements. Really important in certain industries, those of you who are in the medical or perhaps in the aero industries, you know how important it is to track that closed loop and you'll see that from us in the very short future. What about tracking costs? So this is a part, we have a sheet metal part and there's a design chain comes in, I need to make these flanges a little bit longer. Well, let's check the cost and where are we at on cost. And so over here we can see that we're looking at some laser cuts, we're looking at some bends, and how much does that total up to cost? Well, we decided that that part with those longer flanges, it needs some gussets. So using some great solid edge technology, uh, the gusset command, which we've had for probably about 15 years now, drop in a few gussets, just pretty much drag and drop on these two edges to modify the part. And you see it does all the heavy lifting for you. Uh, but the question now is, how did that impact my costs? And I can find that out, out immediately. And the fact is, it impacts them dramatically, because instead of just laser cutting and bending, you're now having to do some sort of press action to get those gussets in there. And so this allows you to bring that cost estimation 
further up in the process. The other area that I think is very exciting is electromechanical, electro meat mechanical. Because as we said, there's a lot of product complexity coming down the pike. And a lot of that is every one of your systems that used to maybe be all mechanical, it's now got electronics, it's got wiring, it's got all these new requirements. And so how are we going to address that? Well, we kind of saw this coming as a company. And about a year ago, we acquired a company called Mentor Graphics. And so those of you that you know, may not follow the industry that closely, Mentor Graphics is, is one of the big, big companies in ECAD, or electrical and electronic CAD. But it's part of Siemens now. And so for the past year, we've been working very closely together to bring new products to market and to bring a new level of collaboration between those tools. And so what you'll see is not just dumb drawings, but true electrical schematics with voltage and current and the ability to analyze the circuits for failure. You'll see all sorts of different types of electrical design. You'll see harness drawings that are extremely complete, full 2D harness design that you can also bring to market. And of course, this is very tightly integrated with the 3D mechanical piece with Solid Edge in this case, and also with NX. And so the information comes across, the schematic's just logical. Now we need to take those logical connections and physically route them. It'll automatically route them because it knows but then you as an engineer need to route it through the clips and make bundles and cables and such, and that's all covered, of course. It's also very tightly integrated. Highlight in the 2D, it highlights in the 3D. Highlight in the 3D, it highlights in the 2D. And you're just gonna see us continue to put energy into this electromechanical piece and bring these things closer and closer together. And we're uniquely positioned to do so with the Mentor technology that's now a part of Siemens. Similarly, in the area of PCB, there's a lot more 3D, 2D in PCB these days. So you see we can actually do 3D operations and see the virtual traces and how they stay connected together if we need to reorder these components perhaps. We can do 3D interference checking for either clearance yellow or interference red. And as we modify these components, again, the 2D is just a different representation of the same data. And so as we do the 3D mods, we see the 2D. What about routing the traces? This is great technology. I'm just gonna swipe here and gesture-based, I'm gonna be able to route between point A and point B. So rather than manually putting in the routes, I'll simply gesture-based put in the routes and it instantly creates the route that you're looking for. Way more productive than either manual or fully automatic, this semi-automatic gesture-based routing I think is really gonna change the way people do this kind of work. And so that's just a little bit about this right-sized digitalization. It is, of course, all the traditional things, the CAD, CAM, CAE, tech pubs, and more. But we feel like we can go beyond that and expand that to the areas of requirements, cost management, electrical, PCB, and really change the way you work in your integrated way. But it's not enough to create a very broad set of products. We also need to create a very deep set of products. When we go to create deep set of products, we end up working on this next generation technology. And I want to describe to you what I mean by that. So you'll see quite a lot of energy at this show about the circles I have here in green. A lot about generative design, awesome new technology. A lot about reverse engineering, a lot of scanner companies, that kind of thing. And of course, a ton about additive. I'm just tripping over additive people everywhere. But of course, you also spend your time in the center circle, which is the traditional 3D solid modeling CAD design. And so the issue has been that these are islands, very much disconnected. So if you think about the yellow circle, the yellow circle is what you do every day. You're using SolidWorks, Pro, E, Inventor, whatever you're using. You're, you're in there with your solid models, your surface models. And these other things have always been something else and different, and that's because they're mesh models, right? So they're just a bunch of triangles put together and you can see them, but you can't really do much with them. And I kind of gave a precursor to this last year that we were intending to solve this problem, and indeed we have, and we've delivered this. Something called convergent modeling that says, I can uniquely tie all this stuff together so the design I do in generative is useful as my main design. The work I do in reverse engineering I can use directly with the rest of my BREP model, solid model design. And we feel like this is a really, really important uh, place we're going as an industry. So I just want to give you an example of this, and this is from a customer, uh, Craig Hall. 
And Craig Hall supplies subsystems to trophy trucks. Trophy truck racing is the unlimited class of off-road racing. So you can really get crazy and make the very best racing truck possible. And Craig is a small business. He's just a couple guys. He's not uh, one of these folks like Dyson, right? And yet he saw how he can use this technology and push it forward. And so I invite you all to think about this as well. So he has a gas pedal assembly. If you focus on the pedal itself, it's made of about five different sheet metal parts that are bent and welded together. He said, what if I use these next generation technologies to do something better? So he has now here the envelope of the five parts, and he's going to use generative design technology to make a new design that's significantly better and lighter. How's the foot pressing on it? Where's it restrained? And you get back this part that really is ready to go to production like this. It's not something where you've been given some idea about how you might want to approach it. It's a completely finished part. Not only that, we're now going to do feature modeling on this completely finished part. We're going to do a cutout. We're going to do a protrusion. These are things that you could not do previously on mesh models, and you can now do. Additionally, you can send it directly out to a print service, right? So here we're going to say, I want to print this, but I don't have a printer. I'm going to send it out. Here's three quotes. Here's what they're going to cost. Here's the lead time. You'll get it in three days to seven days. Pick your poison. Which one do you want? And you'll get your part back. And in fact, this is the finished part here. And again, I'd like to emphasize a couple things. First of all, there's a tab here on the left. Put that aside for a minute. The rest of this part came out of the generative process directly, ready to be printed. And that is completely unique, right? NX, Solid Edge, and Frustum are using these technologies. But he had a late stage design change, and he needed to have a tab with a hole. And he simply used the regular protrusion command, the regular cutout command, and did it on this mesh model. So there, there are no B-spline surfaces here. There's no solid here. And it comes directly ready for 3D printing. And he turned it around and had it in a couple days. I have, in fact, with me here the actual part. And I'd like you to take a look at it. It's really quite amazing. I'll hand it over here. And you can just pass it around. And I'll just catch up with it later. Don't worry about it. Because what I did to get that part is I hit the button that says, I want this part. And I want it in three days. And it'll cost this much. And they sent it to me. So just have it here and look at it in the audience. So the results that he saw were amazing. One of the unexpected results was that it helped him with his supplier lead time. So he had two different suppliers for different types of sheet metal parts. And the longest lead time of a supplier was going to be his longest lead time. Instead, with the printing service, he was able to get it back in just a few days. But the other results he saw were very dramatic as well, right? 65% reduction in weight, so one third the weight of the original. 80% fewer parts, so five parts to one. And no welds at all, so no failure points through welding. But there's more to be done here. There's a next generation of next generation. And so obviously, you can apply the load, you can apply the constraints, and you can generate this part ready for production. Or you can say, no, no, I need to produce this on a machining center. I'm not going to produce it through additive. And so I'm going to add a few more constraints in addition to loads and such. I'm going to say, this is, this is a machined part, so give me the machined answer. You can see we get the machined answer as well. So this is coming very soon to the market. Now, one of the most creative uses I've seen for next generation design is with a company, again, here in the UK called Bright Bricks. And Al and the team at Develop3D covered this um, uh, last month in the February issue. That's one of these statements you probably don't see every day, a problem statement, reverse engineer frame structure for a life-size Lego elephant. Right? So what they do is they produce these life-size sculptures, but they have to be safe. And they, ha they need a lot of structure inside. And so the Lego sculpture itself comes in as a mesh model. The design for it is a mesh model, just like you saw reverse engineering has. And they need to in engineer the interior frame structure of that. And the results they see are quite dramatic as well. So using next generation design tools, they've had a 7x increase in productivity from two weeks to two days. And so that's a lot of what next generation design is about, right? Having really great core technologies in generative reverse engineering and elsewhere, but the ability to pull them all together using convergent modeling and really have a cohesive answer for next generation design. And yet that even itself is not enough as well, because you spend a lot of time in this yellow circle, right, doing solid modeling and design in a solid modeling system. So we took a look at that a few years back and said, you know, it's just not good enough. 
literally the technology that you're using in a history-based design system is 30 years old. It was 1985, basically, was the era of uh, parametric history-based modeling. And so 30 years later, can we not do better than that? And we said, yes, we believe we can. We looked at history-based modeling and said, what's good about it, what's bad about it? It's parametric, it's dimension-driven, it's all good, but it can break the history tree, it can be slow, it can have a variety of issues. And we looked at direct modeling systems, same thing. Fast, intuitive, easy, but the other side, not very good at all the rest of that parametric dimension-driven stuff. And so we came up with something called synchronous technology that's a merger of all the best of these technologies. And it allows you to do some pretty amazing things. So this is a part from another CAD system brought in, and you can see how it respects the design intent. It understands symmetry and those kind of things. The ability to edit multiple parts at one time. So I'm gonna pick two, three, four parts, and I'm going to edit them all together, and it does that symmetrically. It is very dimension driven. This is just a solid body. I'm gonna put a dimension on that solid body and I'm gonna edit the dimension. And in real time, that changed. That wasn't, there was no recompute of the history tree. In real time, it makes that edit. It can be applied to sheet metal modeling as well. The sheet metal modeling in synchronous is, is a great thing to look at. And again, it's very, very dimension driven and parametric. You simply put the dimensions on the 3D model instead of in the 2D sketch and you edit those dimensions and the part will change. No recompute required, no failed history trees. It also allows you to do things like cut and paste, right? So you're used to cut and paste in Word, Excel, et cetera. Here we can just take geometry, literally, and cut it from one part, in this case, this fuel connector, paste it into another part. And when we paste it, it intelligently knows what to do. It connects it up automatically to the rest of the solid models. And yet we can then make adjustments to it as well without having to redefine reference planes and all that stuff that you're used to in your traditional modeling system. Additionally, something really interesting, if you have parts that have a lot of interior detail, live section. You actually cut a section through the part and then use the section to drive the part. It sounds like something that's kind of magic, and indeed it is a little magic. Cut the sections through and then work in the 2D, turn off the rest of the part, and it's actually making modifications to the 3D model that are equivalent to what you're doing in 2D. Very, very productive way to work, but this is just our rethinking of what next generation should be. So next generation's a lot more than just a bunch of buzzwords. It's fully connected up, including deep generative, reverse engineering, additive, synchronous technology, and convergent modeling to pull that all together. But we can provide those tools to you. But it's really up to you to take those tools forward and do great things with them. So I mentioned that you're the creator. The folks in this room are those unique individuals who have the left brain, right brain, creative, practical thing. You gotta take these tools and do great things with them. But I would ask also that you be the catalyst as well. So you need to ask yourself, are you the guy who's going to do the most popular thing? Are you the guy who's going to use the same CAD system as the guy sitting next to you because it's the most popular CAD system? Or are you the guy that's willing to step out from the crowd and say, hey, there might be something better out there and it's important to me and my company to look and evaluate what's the best tool. And so that's all I would ask you to do, is be the catalyst and take a look. We like to make it easy for you to take a look. We say take a look either one of these ways, right? If you wanna download our product and try it on your desktop running like traditional CAD system, you can do that, perfectly fine. If you wanna run it through the cloud today, just open up your web browser and run it through the cloud, you can do that as well. So your choice, desktop or cloud. And when you decide that SolidEdge is the right product for you, we provide a variety of ways to buy it. So subscription, we find subscription is great for smaller companies because smaller companies don't wanna put out a big chunk of capital, they prefer to pay monthly, so subscription monthly exists. Also subscription yearly, so if you wanna get a little price break because you're gonna commit for a year, you can do that as well. Importantly, we provide perpetual or permanent license CAD as well. So you're gonna see a variety of people on this stage who are gonna say, oh, you'd like to buy my CAD? Well, I'm sorry, you can't buy it, you can rent it from me. I'll call it subscription, because it sounds nice. You can only rent it from me, and when you stop paying me, your software will stop working and all your part files will be no good to you at all. And we think that's not fair to say to you how you should buy your software, so if you wanna buy it and have Solid Edge forever, perpetually, not send us another dime, that's okay. That's the way you can do it if you'd like. So we provide all three of these options. 
Now, I have even better news for the students and startups in the audience because it's completely free. You don't even have to send us a dime, right? Free for students, and that's any student. You can be in elementary school. You can be a 90-year-old grandmother in continuing education. Any student can get Solid Edge for free today. Same thing for startups. We've set a very high maximum for what we mean by startups. We want everybody to be able to try this out and to use it productively. So if you're a startup with a great idea, you can get Solid Edge today and start using it. And one other way you can get some access to our technology, and I think this is a great way to, to engage a little bit, is with this new product called the, the Solid Edge Portal. So even though it's called the Solid Edge Portal, and first of all, what does it do? It allows you to collaborate with your customers and suppliers because you can upload your data securely to the cloud, share it with limited customers and suppliers, do view and markup, and collaborate together. I was uh, uh, talking actually with uh, Mouse McCoy earlier today, and they're already using the Solid Edge Collaboration Portal to be able to pull together collaborative teams in different locations. But even though it's called the Solid Edge Portal, it works with all kinds of CAD. Pro-E, SolidWorks, Inventor, anything you might be using will work just fine. So again, I would ask you to be the catalyst, and I have three potential calls to action for you. In fact, maybe you want to do all three. The first is try Solid Edge. If you Google try Solid Edge, you'll come up with the free trial. You decide, do I want to do it cloud-based or do I want to do it desktop-based? Up to you. The second thing is to really understand what generative is about. So I'm going to introduce some of you to a new word, which is, I had to look up the pronunciation, it's Udemy. So Udemy is a great online university, and you can get all sorts of free courses there. There's a fabulous course on generative. So you're like, you're here and you're learning about generative, just Google Udemy generative and you'll get a course on generative design. And of course, you can use your free Solid Edge trial to try it out. And then finally, collaborate with any CAD. It really doesn't matter what CAD you have today. You can collaborate more effectively with your customers and suppliers completely securely. You can get online. Just search for Solid Edge Portal and you'll come up with it. And finally, I'd invite you to talk to us in our booth. So we have several qualified folks down there. I'll try to be down there from time to time. We have a big uh, Siemens booth and we'd love to talk with you and learn more about your problems and the challenges you're facing and help you to solve those. Thanks so much. Thank you.